Mm. Food insecurity across the country is more prominent than ever. That's according to a new report out today from Food Bank Australia. It's more than... It's found more than one million Australian children have gone hungry in the last year alone. And the CEO of Food Bank Australia, Brianna Casey, joins us now. Good morning, Brianna. It's a bit disturbing having a look at this report and, and seeing how things have changed in the decade that you've sort of been trying to take a tally of what's going on. Good morning. It is very concerning. For us at Food Bank, it's not so much surprising, but it is incredibly confronting. What we do know is that we have an increasing number of Australians who are literally going without food. Food insecurity sounds like a really impersonal and technical term, and it can range from being insecure about whether or not you ha have access to food right through to physically skipping meals. And what we've found is that one in six Australian adults and a further 1.2 million children are physically going without food on a regular basis. We absolutely have to do better. Mm, and how is that changing what we've seen, particularly in the last 18 months, is a lot of variability around food insecurity in Australia. There's been a lot of ups and downs, and certainly what we have seen is that when government income support measures have been introduced, when we've been able to have record spending from the federal government going into emergency relief and food relief, it's made a very tangible difference. But what we've also found is that for a large number of people, they're in a worse position right now than they were this time last year. So the problem's not going away and we've got a very big task ahead of us if we're to meet these challenges around how many Australians are really struggling. How has the pandemic affected those who are trying to help the situation? Mm -hmm. It's been incredibly difficult. We've had the perfect storm at Food Bank in that our supplies were under enormous duress in the early stages of COVID-19. We saw, saw a lot of pressure on supply chains. We saw a lot of panic buying. Um, and what we've seen at the other end of the spectrum is a huge level of demand. I know any of your Victorian viewers would have probably been quite shocked by the queues outside the Victorian student pop-ups run by Food Bank Victoria. I know those viewers in Western Sydney would have been seeing police and uh, Defence Force personnel distributing food bank hampers into communities. We've been under huge pressure, but thanks to incredible support from the Australian public, from the federal government, from governments around the country and the incredible food and grocery industry, we have been able to get record volumes of food and groceries out there. But what's keeping us up at night at Food Bank is that demand continues to outstrip supply. So we've got a big challenge here if we're to get to the root causes of why this is happening and really start looking at long-term solutions. Yeah, Brianna, what struck me as even more interesting is that a lot of the people who were saying they they weren't sure where their next meal was coming from actually had a job. It wasn't it yes. wasn't that people were jobless. Correct. I think what we've seen, particularly in the last 12 months, is a lot of myth-busting around what makes people experience hardship and, and what causes a family or an individual to be under huge duress. We have found that a huge number of food insecure Australians, in fact, more than half, are in fact employed in some way. We know that underemployment is a major issue. And when we combine that with other factors, if we really look at the causes of poverty and inequality, there are three. It's about not having adequate income. It's about about your uh, cost of living expenses, your housing costs, energy costs, telecommunications, uh, medical expenses, and it's about your debt levels. And we do know that a lot of people have gone into extreme levels of debt, uh, particularly in the last couple of years. So we need to look at all of those factors and help people out. And food relief is very much a hand up rather than a handout. So this is about addressing that bump in the road and acknowledging life happens to everyone. Brianna Casey from Food Bank, thanks for joining us this morning. Thank you. All right, let's have a look at what's happening in finance. Matt? Lisa, when you think of major contributors to the Australian economy, you probably think of mining, tourism, hospitality maybe. Uh, what you may not think of is cycling. But an Australian first report launched today by Treasurer Josh Frydenberg